Good evening. This is Jazz and the kitties. Sure, if you see, both of them are there. So <laughs> there is over here is Cookie and Pom Pom. So they are here with the with me for the winter solstice. And tonight we're doing right now at this hour tarot reading for the winter solstice. So First of all, the energy of this winter solstice, it is the energy of change, but not so much the change, not so much the transformation, because we've been through that for the past two, three years. We've been through the change. We've been through the transformation. So many things have happened. Businesses have just fizzled, and I've heard that from entrepreneurs from around the world, just a business fizzle. Whatever worked before does not work anymore. Um, relationships have kaput um it, you know so many things finances um politics so many things in our society have just it's it's ending it's transformed it's just brought back down to earth that's what we've already been experiencing for the past year or two or three so now we're still not done, but we are in the rebuilding phase. So right now, as you go through the winter solstice tonight, find that place of stillness within, find that place of inner peace within, and kind of allow for the dust to fall down. And from there, it's about building back a new foundation. So everything's been shaken to the core, the foundations have been shaken, the foundations of maybe your life, maybe your business, maybe politics, maybe social structures. Things have been shaken for the last couple of years. Now it's time to rebuild the new foundation. That's what this is. And when in about three hours, when the sun enters zero degree Capricorn, this is the new era this is the era of Capricorn. And what does Capricorn want? Capricorn tells us to look for the long-term impact of our actions. So right now, and with the eclipse next week, this is a time to look into a long-term plan. Some of us spiritual people say, ugh, plans. We just want to go with the flow. We just want to, to do or to go where spirit calls us. Yes, and we need this and. We also need to plan where we want to go. Otherwise, we are like those windmills, like those girouettes, and we're just spinning and spinning and spinning in the wind, and we're not accomplishing much. Right now is the time to get down in the trenches, to do the hard work, to do the plan, so that the, the dreams that we have, whether it's world peace, whether it's success in the business, you know, whatever it is, flourishing relationship, being, embodying love, it needs some plan. It needs structure, right? So this is kind of the energy of the solstice with a Capricorn starting. Um, so let's look into a little bit more with a tarot card into the energy of this rebuilding. Rebuilding is never super easy, by the way. The shop. <laughs> it's not easy, like two cats going at it. Um, rebuilding means that we need to really let go of what was there before. So it means that the way that we were comfortable before of doing everything, the way that we were comfortable in our routine, the way that we were comfortable in society, that is no longer the way to be. So how do we show up then? We don't know that how yet. So how am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to do? How am I showing up? We don't know that yet. So it's, it's an uncomfortable doing the foundation work, it can be very, very uncomfortable, especially if you don't have that long-term vision. So the invitation is to be comfortable in the discomfort and to allow yourself to feel the discomfort because it's change, because it's a transformation, and you need to allow for that to happen. 
And this is also where ego is going to kick your butt because ego does not like change. Ego does not like transformation. Ego just wants to do things the same way over and over and over again. But you know in your soul that you can't, you know in your soul that it's done. So allow yourself to be uncomfortable and make way for transformation. 2020, by the way, is a year coming up in numerology. So it's two plus zero plus two plus zero, and that is a number four. And four, again, is a number of foundation. Four is one of those primary numbers. It's like Metatron's cube. It's, it's one of those, like the flower of life, one of those sacred geometry um, symbol. And it's all about solid foundation, lasting, legacy making. It's, it's that type of foundation. So that is really what we're working on. It's not the flimsy stuff. Um, so if you're working on your intentions for the new year, for the year ahead, don't make it about the flimsy stuff. Really go down deep. And allow yourself tonight to go down into that depth so that your foundation is deep in the rock and not just surface stuff. Make sense? So let me know in the comments if that makes sense to you and how you're feeling about that, about rebuilding a new foundation this year. Okay, first card to jump out of the deck is a reminder to fill our cups. This is the Ace of Cups. So this is a new beginning. And as I mentioned uh, this afternoon to uh, the beautiful group we did Chakra Dance, um, my key word this year is nourishment. So this really speaks to me to nourishment as well. Making sure that whatever action you take, the foundation that you put into the world, that you feel nourished. It nourishes you to your soul. It fills your cup so that you um, go out in the world from a place of, of being content, of being fulfilled, of being confident, um, so that all the actions are actions based on love and not actions that are based out of fear. That's where the Ace of Cup is. So it's about your emotions. Um, so with Capricorn, again, um, looking into building the foundation and the very earthy stuff, we also need to mind our emotions because emotions is energy, right? So we need to, to very, be very mindful of the emotions that we bring to everything that we do, um, making sure that we're very authentic in our choices. So if you do something and it's out of obligation and that your real answer is a no, but you're doing it anyway out of obligation, there's an invitation for you to switch that. So either switch the energy, switch how you approach the task or um, be done with the task altogether, right? So you're always at choice. You're always at choice about how you feel and you're always at choice about the energy that emotional energy that you bring into everything you do. So that's part of your foundation as well. So be really raw, be really authentic with how you show up in the world, um, making sure that you tap into this deep, deep well of love and of knowledge and um, the divine feminine as well. With the, with the cups, it's the element of water, and that is a divine feminine. So tap into that wisdom. Allow it to flow through you. And so that this is your foundation. Your foundation is based on wisdom, on a new way of being, maybe a more feminine way of being, the way of the circle as opposed to the way of the hierarchy. How does that sound for you? Mm. So next right action mm, beautiful card. This is the world. The world. So if you notice on this card, all the four elements are represented. So earth, air, fire, and water are represented. And also the green man in the oak tree is also represented. So this is 
the 21st card of the major arcana so it's the last card of the major arcana this is a completion of a cycle and it's also ascension so as a next right action i would say this card speaks to really tapping into our higher selves really tapping into the wisdom that we have tapping into the four elements of nature that we have within us earth air fire water we are made of those elements so also a reminder for all those spiritual workers out there who don't want to be in a body who just want to be in their heads just want to be in spirits just want to be in meditation all the time that all that is fine and dandy but we are here on earth to be embodied so let's not forget the body let's not forget the earth let's not forget the 3d because this is where change happens this is where rubber hits the road spiritually figuratively um and so let's bring in all those four elements we will not bring the change that we want into the world if we stay really flighty in our minds and in our spirit we need to anchor that in anchor the knowledge in if we want to be like that oak tree and have strong arms strong leaves in the wind and that girth um, then we also need to go real deep into our roots we need to be grounded this is where um, manifestation happens it's in the groundedness and so the invitation then for tonight is to ground yourself so spend some time grounding and how do you ground it's by using all of your physical senses right grounding doesn't have to be again something in your head or in the spirit and you just imagine being grounded don't imagine being grounded be grounded so that means that notice what's around you notice the temperature of the air on your skin notice the scents in the air notice what you hear notice you know what are the colors what are the shapes what are the textures around you um notice the feel of the clothes on your body notice just notice 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 this mindfulness 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 is grounding know the space that your body occupies in the room in the space that you have that is grounding it's not woo woo magical you know let's imagine the big anchor going down in the earth it can be that but that is in your head i need you i'm inviting you to be grounded for real in your body in the present moment with your breath so with every breath you take notice the air coming into your nose notice the temperature of that air you feel that exchange of temperature through your lungs and the air that comes out of your body on the out breath the temperature is different than the air coming in that is all part of grounding it's about being present in the moment this is where magic happens anyway it's in the moment not in the future not in the past it's now this is a manifestation it's now in this moment that is a grounding and that is one of the biggest lessons of all right it's to be content fulfilled filling your cup in this moment it's not i'll be happy when i'll be proud of myself when i'll be done with this when it's now that also entails um a decision so what is the decision that you have right now to make and just choose just choose so enough with the thinking about it with the pondering with the i don't know maybe it's just my imagination maybe it's just that just choose ground it in take action a message now from spirit from goddess and we have another card from the major arcana and this is the star so notice here yes there is nudity um, so notice the star notice all the the points the arms of the star 
and the stars all around, so there are seven. This is Venus. Venus, by the way, who is going to be conjunct Jupiter, if I'm not mistaken, next week. So this is a time that is highly creative. So it's a time to renew your dreams. It's a time to renew your hope. And if you notice the woman, she has one foot in the water and one foot on the ground. So again, one foot in the emotions and one foot on earth. So again, we have the Ace of Cups, which is the emotions, and we have the world, which is earth. So all that is being echoed again. So, and same thing with the Ibis, the bird there, um, is, is represents also the element of air, but also the element of water, because the Ibis is a um, fisher bird, so stays in the water to catch a fish. So this is a card of um of building bridges so it's a card in a way to end dualities oftentimes when we have a choice to make is either or right it's this or that it's black or white it's you know right or left so with that star card with being in the, those elements of both water and earth the invitation is an and, so this is a bridge, it's a common ground. So if you have a um, um, choice to make that's between two things, how can you in your mind switch the polarity that you need to be at either side of the polarity and how can you make that an and, a togetherness? Does that make sense? Hi, Sharon. So that is the invitation here is to have that and. So you're this and that, not this or that. Does that make sense? I had a similar message when I was still working with the federal government. Um, and I was wondering at that time, because I really felt the calling to be the spiritual teacher, the spiritual healer, um, but I was still working in an office and I was wondering, um, how can I be this spiritual and work in the office? Like to me in my head, it didn't make sense to be both of them occupying the same space. And as I went out on my walk, like there was seagulls were all around and they were doing their kind of laughing sound. That's not very harmonious. Um, and then I looked up the significance of the, of that bird and it was, it's both. It's an and. It's both. So you can be a spiritual person and you can work in an office. You can be spiritual and have a profitable business. You can be this and this. So this is the invitation in your choice. So this is what Venus, the star, um, especially when she is conjunct Jupiter just after the eclipse next week, is to switch that mentality from the polarities and find that and what is that for you so meditate on that tonight what is that bridge that you can build whether within yourself or in your relationship or at work or in your community what is that bridge that you're building that is the message from the stars tonight And a fourth card, just to guide us a little bit further. What is the outcome that, you know, that, that shooting arrow, that, that objective that we can work together into building this year as we grow a new foundation? Another major arcana. Okay, so we have the Ace of Cups. That is from the minor arcana, but it's an ace, so it's a new beginning. And then the three other cards are from the major arcana. So just by looking at the cards, you know, this is going to be a major, major year. Um, it's a year um, that's for the books, right? It's just major changes, major transformation, major rebuilding that's happening. This is not, again, the fluffy stuff with Capricorn. This is, this is the big stuff. So we have the chariot. Again, it's that message of bringing things together because you see there's a white horse and the black horse. 
and both horses, they don't have harnesses. And so it's a charioteer that needs to bring two different um, polarities, two different animals, two different um, goals, and make them work together in the one direction. So the charioteer is, is either returning from battle or going into battle, but needs to make sure that everything in its power is working in the same direction because otherwise the chariot cannot go anywhere if the two horses want to go in different directions so you need to train yourself so that means also training your spirit and your ego to work together as a whole it means making sure that your spiritual routine and your physical routine work together toward your goal and if you see well on this card, the charioteer is not holding any reins, right? So, so this is not a card about that deep control, about controlling out of the outcome of the from from like everything that's physical. This is from a place of power. This is from that place of magic. It's from that place of empowerment. It's from that divine inner self. This is a place from where you control the outcome. Yes, there are details, but the details take only second place. Like so your your full schedule, your timetable, all the tools that you have, that has to take, you know, second place to this beingness. So if I'm looking then at all the cards, that we picked for this year. So we have the Ace of Cups, then we have the World, and we have the Star, and then the Chariot. That's major energy moving forward, major energy moving towards your goal. It's an energy of empowerment, of growing deep roots. It's an energy of showing up in the world as that empowered person, knowing that being empowered does not mean having power over others. It means having power over yourself. So overcoming your fears, overcoming your ego resistance, overcoming your inner stories that tell you that you can't or that you shouldn't or that maybe it's not right or this or that. It's overcoming all of that, having power over your beingness and finally showing up in the world the way you're meant to show up in the world to do that big mission. Big year ahead. How does that resonate with you? How does this message resonate with you? Sorry about the cat having a bit of a fight under my chair. <laughs> they certainly feel some of that energy. Um, do you want a card for yourself to kind of um, go deeper into what that story means for you? Just let me know. Put that in the comments. Say, I'd like a card or me too and I will pick a card for you. So I'm looking at that little eye, seeing that there are two people watching, maybe Sharon, you're one of them. So if you want a card, just let me know in the comments that you want a card and I will pick one for you. Giving a few moments. And if there's no one, I will close this um, Facebook Live. Okay, hey Sharon, let's pick a card for you. Major Arcana again. This is the Fool's card. So Sharon, for you, what this card says is that this is a major new beginning for you. And the energy for you to, um, to have for yourself is the energy of curiosity. So Tonight, especially as uh, with the solstice, review all the baggage that you have, the emotional baggage, the mental baggage, the life experience baggage, and can you lighten that load? You see, the fool is taking that new journey with only the little benchon, so just like the little uh, thing on his shoulder, not like three duffel bags, right? Just, just a little thing. So, and the fool is walking really near the precipice, but is not afraid of falling down either. It's kind of looking up and just being, um, you know, carefree. 
So that is the energy for you to cultivate this year. So you're going on a new journey. This is a new beginning for you. This is something really major. This is a new cycle in your life. So I don't know if that's your relationship, if that's job, um, whatever that is for you, allow it to be totally new. Allow it to um, allow yourself to be astonished. Allow yourself to look at life and at the situ and at your situation with the eyes of a child. You know, wonder, excitement, curiosity. So, walk lightly with that energy, and you will do great things. It will renew your energy, um, and it's going to help you build that new foundation. It is going to be a really, really great year. Um, so don't sweat the details right now. Um, it's not about knowing everything that's coming. It's just about being curious about, oh, I wonder how that's going to unfold for me. That's kind of the key word for you. So I wonder what is going to happen today. I wonder what new adventure that I can create today. I wonder what I'm going to experience. So allow that to be your mantra through the year. Does that make sense? Let me know. Um, Sharon, there we go. So um, I hope that that was helpful for you. If anyone else wants a card, let me know. And if you're not watching live and you still want a card, we'll still put something in the comments. And um, as I go through the night, because this is an all-nighter for me, the winter solstice, I will answer and I will pop a card there for you with a bit of an explanation of what this might mean for you. Have a great night. We will see you a little bit later, maybe in an hour or so, 9 o'clock, maybe 9.30 since it's 8.30 now. Um, so your challenge right now is to meditate on the message of the winter solstice. So new beginnings, strong foundation, um, and building that bridge between your own inner mental or emotional polarities. What can that be for you? So journal on that and let me know how that goes for you. So that's kind of the challenge, um, your task for the next half hour to an hour. All right. So good, Sharon. I'm glad that that makes sense for you. Be well. Much love from my heart to you. And we'll see you in about an hour for the next challenge. All right. See you then.